It's 7 past 7 and we are live on Joy 99.7 FM. This is Geek Squad with your girl Adobia Breachum. Good evening to you if you're joining us from your car or you're probably seated wherever you are listening to us from. We are live from Joy FM. And this night, we are having an interesting conversation on Geek Squad. The month of April, we've been discussing a lot about artificial intelligence tools. And one of the things that we know we have been saying on Geek Squad for this year, 2024, is that you need to learn something new in tech. And what we are seeing is that AI tools would really be helping us, especially if you're a student or you're a worker. And we started a conversation last week, how you can supercharge your office work using AI tools. And I had with me Samuel Boatin, we delved into the conversation, spoke about a number of tools. I'll be giving a recap on that when we start our conversation for tonight. Can you just imagine a world where you are working and there's very little that you do. I mean, if you have AI tools to just aid you when you are composing your email, you have a content to send to someone and AI can just assist you with the editing, summarize everything for you. It's just within a matter of minutes. That is why we are having a conversation on supercharging your work life using AI tools. And it doesn't have to be only about work. Probably you're a student and you may need to summarize some lecture notes that you probably read and get ready for your exam. This is just the conversation for you. I am joined by Samuel Boatin, the content creator for interesting digital trends. Samuel, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us once again this evening. I think last week we had a conversation on some of the tools that people can use and the feedback was really great. We had questions coming through and you can just join the conversation by sending us a message on the WhatsApp number 055-1111-997, 055-1111-997. Today we'll be opening the phone lines as we have the conversation. If you have any questions, or there is any contribution that you like to make, you would be able to reach us and then we would hear from you. So we mentioned a number of tools and we'd just like to do a quick recap before we get into the conversation for tonight. And some of the tools that we spoke about, we spoke about Mid Journey, mm -hmm. how people can use that when they have to do anything on Imagine. images, on images, yes. yes. And then we spoke about Grammarly. Yes for editing i liked what you said grammarly and then chat gpt i think our focus our main focus was on chat gpt yes. you mentioned that the two of them are like lovers for you and yes. how you use them together <laughs> you can use them together to create content and then also to edit the content so mid journey just in case you miss the conversation though you can just check it out on our youtube and facebook channels not today you can watch us live today at joy 99.7 fm and then later you can watch last week's show if you missed it we spoke about tome t-o-m-e and that one is also PowerPoint for powerpoint presentations and then we spoke about canva canva yes. too you can also use that for image yes graphics. And then also even for the PowerPoints. We spoke about free pick too. Also for image generation. For also image generation. And then otter.ai. That's O T T E R yes. dot Voice AI. Transcribing. Yeah. Maybe you've attended a meeting and then you need to just transcribe whatever recording. You can use that for it. Then we spoke about Right Sonic. Yes, yes, yes. We spoke about Right Sonic also. All of them for content. Rysonic for the content um, um, generation. Okay, so there were some questions that came through and then we'll, we want to touch on some of them before we get into the other tools. I think one of the things that came in was someone asking about thesis AI, something that they can use for their thesis. I think this one we just have to probably have a 
conversation where we are not focusing only on professionals, but we can also look at students. Student. Maybe someone has to submit their thesis, how they can check for plagiarism. We can look at such tools okay. and then talk about them too. And then another thing that also came up was on the marketing AI tools. So that one, I think we can just start from there, the marketing AI tools. Probably talk about some content generation tools. We spoke at length concerning chat GPT. So if someone missed it, you can probably just touch a bit on it for someone who is into marketing and they want an AI tool that they can use. So okay. we can start from there, yeah. So for the thesis, should we start with the thesis? Maybe the marketing, then okay. we come to the thesis. So for marketing, for someone who is marketing, you have to understand the various sectors or departments in the marketing you are involved in. So for instance, maybe you want to create um, a simple blog. A blog may include text and then images Pictures, so yeah. that's when you have to now divide what you want to create into different platforms so you take maybe the chat gpt right sonic or even jasper assistance for creating content you can also so they've added another one the yes, jasper jasper yep. j-a-s-p-e-r j-a-s-p-e-r you can check it out you can use jasper to also help you with some of these content creating captions or whatever you need you can use it to generate a whole list of um content calendar to assist you in whatever you're going to do for the company for the year. Yeah, so on and so forth. So depending on what the area you want to tackle in um, the AI, if, sorry, the projects that you're working on, the marketing mm -hmm. projects you're working on, you take it, then you break it down, then you add it. That's why the AI is not fully taken over yet. Like, they'll fire you because if they can have one platform to have everything done, you would have been gotten rid of already. But you have to be able to take these ideas and divide them into diff different proportions and then use them from different AI together to create something magic. Okay, so that's on the marketing. It's not just one to based on the kind of work that you're doing, but then you can yeah. look at a different type. So if it has to do with probably you may be doing presentations to mm -hmm. your clients, then you can use uh, some of the yes. tools that we for spoke about for presentations. Yes. That's the tom, tom that's T-O-M-E. The person slice AI, slice AI slice is there. Sharing. They can use that yeah. also to create them. Okay, so now we can come to the students and touch on their sides. So it's, it's basically the same thing um, for a student. What do you want to do? For instance, you, you can't tell the <laughs> chat to or any other AI to just write a full thesis for you. It, it wouldn't work that way. It's, it's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's this is, yeah. Uh, uh, Today uh, we said we're going to even talk about the prompts. Yes, yes What yes. we put in there. So yeah, as you have just mentioned, this is just a tip of it. You can't just tell it to write your no, thesis no. for you. The AIs are sometimes limited to a particular number of characters. So they can't write a whole chapters like, so what you do is that, as I said, you have to break it down into smaller pieces. Okay, you want to write on this, you want to write on that. So have a conversation. That's when you're able to break it down and then you're able to generate them one after the other and put them together and then you have your full thesis. Yeah, yeah, okay. Maybe we can touch on some of the tools they can use for plagiarism. I remember one of the messages that came spoke about 1018. Yes, it's one yes, of the tools that can be used to check mm -hmm. for plagiarism at least you can check the percentage depending on which school or whatever project you're working on you know the percentage that yes. they don't mind it being copied yes. at least you have the references to them it mm -hmm. has to be clear are there any other tools that copy leaks copy leaks copy leaks yes so the trick here is if you your lecturer is one of the stubborn ones that do not want you to copy <laughs> from ai you'd have to check it yourself before you submit it. And when you check it, you can actually rewrite it using other platforms, mixing it up together so that it doesn't have the, the AI nature too much. So for instance, you can just take whatever you have gotten from Chad EPT and put it in Quillbot to mix it up a bit. You can mix it with uh, Grammarly and you yourself We've can read touched through. on Quillbot right now, so it, I think it would be good for us to just spell it out and then what it does. We okay. didn't mention it at all last week. Okay. So Quillbot. So Quillbot is uh, Q -U -I Q -U -I L L B O T like yes. robots B O T. Um, it's for writing. It can help you rephrase statements and so on and so forth. So it's one of the. It doesn't work fully like um, ChatGPT. So you can get the information from ChatGPT fully. Then just move it to Cobot to restructure, rephrase, even a type of energy or whatever you want to do to it to yeah, tune it up a bit. Then you can use it. Just like Grammarly. Grammarly yes. will not write your essays for you per se, but you could just use the Grammarly to end up mixing it okay and then making it less more uh, okay so quill but that's q u i l l b o t it's just like the way we spoke about grammarly you can use it 
in conjunction with ChatGPT, yes. at least to edit the contents that you generate it, mm-hmm. you generate from ChatGPT, mm-hmm. and then you can rephrase it, summarize it, whatever you want to do with your content that can be used. Okay, so that's on the checks for the students for the plagiarism yes. checks, and then using so that whatever you end up giving to the lecture like you're saying if he's the kind of person that doesn't want you to I do would just hate it, yeah. <laughs> when they hear it, they're like oh my god <laughs> but should yeah. it even be the case that people hate it i think it was one of the things that we saw from last week's uh, messages that were coming through that people think that they are not going to even end up using their minds at all but then they will just yeah so there's a that's why, that's why it has uh, a limitation to it so, for instance, you want to do a research on a particular paper for your class. As a student, you would know that if you go and sit in the exam room, Charlie Bitt will not follow you, or <laughs> Tom cannot follow you, or any other AI cannot follow you to the exam so. So the, the usage of these tools are not to take away your learning process or just take away your ability to think. You're supposed to utilize it to be able to learn more, work faster, so they can capture even the lectures that you're supposed to use, like uh, two hours to learn, you use 30 minutes to learn. You still learn, all right, but yeah. you've now made the time shorter so they can move to other subjects. You don't st- wait learning deep into the night for something you could have absorbed in 30 minutes. Yes. So it's supposed to help you not to take away your learning. Yes. Okay. So as you just mentioned, some of the tools can even help you summarize mm-hmm. some of the contents that yes. you have. And based on that, like you're saying, it will even make you more productive and let you do your learning faster. Yes. But sometimes there are some notes that looking at the quantity, and now we have a lot of ebooks anyway, mm-hmm. looking at the quantity and what you have to read within a particular period, with some of these tools, at least you have the option to just summarize it. Yes. You can get the key points out, learn them and just get ready for your mid or your exam. All right, so at least we've done a little recap on what we spoke about. I think we can now look at some other tools that we didn't touch on at all that can be of benefit to either a professional or a student. Okay, yeah. so let me quickly join what we've done so far to a new browser known as ARC Browser, A-R-C. Mm. So it's ARC Search, A-R-C, then normal search, S-E-A-R-C-H. This kind of browser will help you to, as we're not doing research, I think I had a, someone asked me a question recently about um, what is best, Pixel 8, that's for Google, and then the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which one is the best? I had to go online and then check. It took me some time, and then it just occurred to me that, oh, I have this new tool that I've downloaded that I'm testing out. Why don't I just open it up? I opened it up and then opened the website. All I had to do was to tap at the bottom and press summarize. Whatever I needed to read from the website, all the ads, all the plenty images that they added, and all the newsletter things that I had to just skip was just skipped. And then they write everything in points and bullets for you. So you can read from the website whatever is needed. So it's, it summarizes whatever context coming from the website for you. Then you can easily now take your point out. So this goes to the student. Yeah, so you're this asked will be to, very helpful. Then. Yes. Please, can we mention the name again and spell it out? ARC Browser. A-R-C B-R <laughs> Browser. Browser. <laughs> <laughs> or you can search for ARC Search. A-R-C S-E a R C H. It also has another feature, which is also amazing. Um, for instance, if you want to search about mitochondrion, a, a science, whatever. Right. A, yeah, you just go on the browser. Instead of you now, you see how Google works sometimes. There's some topics that are very annoying to search on. Yeah. You have to open from website to website to website. To, oh. You can just quickly go to the ARC browser. It has the intelligence of the AI. So you just type in browse for me and then mention a topic or whatever you are researching on. And to gather from different websites, instead of you going to website by website to get information, you go to all these websites, put them all together, and give you the, what, the information in a customized website for you. So multiple websites put together in one particular page with the right information and without ads. That's what it does. It can do that for you. All right, we already have a question from Vincent in Accra. Vincent is asking, please, what is the AI tool which records and writes minutes of meetings? Okay. The AI tool so for that. It's TL semicolon TV. TL semicolon TV. Yes. Okay. So yeah, that's one of the tools that can, can be Otter used. AI tool. Yes. Otter, yeah. Otter AI tool. So that one is O T T E R dot AI. 
I think Adobe Firefly can also no, no, that no. one would just do the transcribing. An, uh, that one we spoke about for video generation, image generation, and all that. Yes. So they've uh, improved on it. You can now add things to videos that are not there. Okay. Yes. Okay. I don't know if you saw this um, Davido issue that came out recently. Davido. Yes, there's a training issue of Davido. There's an image of him and a lady. Someone was able to replace the head of Davido with another guy. Which totally <laughs> ruins <is> that. <laughs> <laughs> Using the power of this particular AI too. So, yeah, it has a lot of applications. All right. So, that is it for you. The tools that you can use for transcribing. We have spoken about the otter.ai and then the TL semicolon DV. That one, you can use it to trans transcribe, transcribe your meeting. So, I think from the discussion we've been had, you can just let it join the meeting. And yeah, then yeah. once... So it will come in as a person. It's like someone else is in the meeting. Yeah. And all you have to do is just let it be and just have your conversations. It's able to even tag some people's names and everything that you assign. If you give it task when you're done, it will have a list of all the tasks assigned to the particular person. Yeah. And everyone, everyone will get an email from the particular AI yeah. concerning what they're supposed to do and how the meeting went about. Yeah. I think I also even mentioned that Zoom now also has an AI yes. summary companion that you can just use once you initiate it during the meeting. After the meeting, you have a summary of basically what was spoken about transcribed for you and that can be used. I know a lot of people use Zoom, so it would be good for them to just activate it too. And then you have that in place for you. Okay, we've spoken about the Act Browser today. What other two do we talk about next? Any other one? Okay, so before I don't we know. Get, okay, if, we have another question. So just before we get into the tools, there is a question from... Ajovi, she's asking any AI tool for risk management and investigations. Any AI okay, tool so for that? No matter. Okay. Yeah, you're so going no to say something. No matter the environment you are found in, all you have to do is to understand the ones that we've mentioned so far and be able to break it down to fit. So, what, what, what exactly are you looking for in risk management? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. So, you can, for example, you can, f uh, for I worked with a company when I was doing my national service, sorry, my internship. They have this, it's an engineering company. They do safety and blah, blah, blah. So every morning they have a meeting. So it's like a stand-up meeting. They talk about what to practice during that time. You could go on uh, one of these um, gen uh, content generation, right? Sonic, uh, Chat GPT, or any other one, and just ask it to generate information concerning safety working under sea. Mm. Yes. And then convert it to slide using Tome. Okay. And then use maybe mid journey images or free pick images and then put them together and then present it to them in the morning on the screen. That way they're able to relate with the information you're working with. At the same time too, um, it becomes more realistic because it's the current information you get from these particular platforms. Yes. So depending on what you want to do, you have to always break it down to fit these particular platforms that are coming up. Yes. Okay, okay. And I think one of the things that we've just even been saying, there are numerous AI tools available. And like I mentioned from the beginning of the program today, one of the things you have been telling our listeners is that this year, we want you to learn something new related to tech. So at least with some of the tools we have even spoken about, sometimes it's just a Google search yes. away from you. Google you can it. just Google it. What are some AI tools that can be used for, for A, B, C or risk or whatever it is. At least there are a number of them that you can look at yeah there are a number of them available i think there is audit board there is resolver you can just read more around it and then see how best it fits the work that you are doing as someone just mentioned earlier we can look at that i think that when we started the conversation today i don't know whether there's another two because i want us to touch on the prompts it's something that is very necessary if we're talking about the different types of tools that are available we need to find out how we can input our request which is the prompt and then based on that get the right results because as you mentioned some of them i just think oh yeah i can do this for me i want my thesis written i want chapter one chapter two <laughs> just put everything together is that really we need to talk about how we can generate some of these prompts is there something before okay. any other two before we can just talk about the prompts and then maybe we can I'll actually mention co-pilot for windows okay. Yes, so yes, co-pilot, co -pilot, yeah. Uh, I'm sure probably you've seen it, but you don't know what it is about. <laughs> Especially for those who often have their PC connected to the internet. There's this icon that pop up at the corner of your PC. It comes on the right hand side where the text 
manager used to be the very right hand side down you mentioned below. for windows too it's for windows windows 11 um you'll be there and it to appear in the corner yes you just click it it's like chat gpt but more of uh, yeah it works like that let me just say it that way it also can be used to do research online you can talk to it you can ask it questions it can help you with image generation it's, it's a virtual assistant big virtual assistant by windows itself yeah yes so it's it does all these things it even does image generation it's connected to dot e you mentioned dot e last the last time we met connected all these particular platforms so from your very desktop you don't need to download anything it's already connected to your pc you go to the right hand side the very corner of your pc you see copilot by windows mm -hmm. click on it and just have a conversation whatever you need you can hit it there so if you're confused about any of these platforms so how do i go no don't worry yourself just go to the corner of your, your own pc windows 11 unless you've not been updating your pc <laughs> if you've been updating you're connected to the internet yeah then it's already there you've not noticed yeah it? so that is also one of the things that we can use co-pilot Co and it's a virtual assistant yeah yes. virtual assistant when we talk about virtual assistant we're talking about like the way we have siri and you can just say hi siri and just ask your question and you are good to go that's how co-pilot also works and then it's even does some more things as yes. someone has explained we have another message from nick he's saying the lecturers must adapt and change the nature of questions they ask students i believe this is so true they like asking knowledge and application questions too much they should focus on questions that requires creativity this is from nick Thank you for that input. If you're a lecturer listening to us, I think it's something that we need to take note of. But sometimes it's a bit difficult. Like, we need to, it's as if more often than not, you have to learn what has been given to you and then come and pour it out. Mm -hmm. So, depending on the department you are in, actually, some departments, no matter what you are, you are doing, you have to be forced to learn that way. <laughs> some departments are not for creativity. You get it? It's uh, theory. So, you have to pick it up that way. And just pour it out. You can't be so creative as he's thinking, unless you're maybe in a field like uh, maybe graphics or something, uh, media, communication, and all those things. That one you're allowed to express yourself in various formats. Imagine you did physics. And <laughs> something <laughs> but creative. it's with those ones you'll be doing application of well, what what has been. Not necessarily. I, I did physics and I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's all theory. <laughs> you don't need to be creative anyway. <laughs> you need the tertiary. Oh no, you can't be creative. Can you create your own formula? No, no, I'm asking did you do it in the tertiary? Yeah, I did it. Uh, okay. You, you can't create your own. Problem. But those who did those pure courses, I mean, yeah. I just doff so my heart for them. Chemistry, no, unless you are giving a project work. So they are all like theoretical, so you have to stick with that. That's why the questions are like that. Mm. Yeah, so. Okay. So at least we've gotten some input there, depending on the kind of course you can yes. be applying or you ask them to be more creative. There's also another message from Onyakojo. Hello, Geek Squad. Which tool can I use to convert text to speech? I think this has come in again. So we spoke about Otter AI. Yeah. Otter.ai. Yeah. Otter yes. Otter.ai. You can, you can use that. And you can also try Speechify. Yeah. S-P-E-E-C-H-I-F-Y. Thank you so much for that. This is Geek Squad with your girl Adobia Breachum and we have been having a conversation on how you can supercharge your office work or how you can enhance your office work using AI tools. You can let us hear from you by reaching us on the WhatsApp number 055-1111-997. We will be opening the phone lines so that you can call in and ask your questions. When it's time, we'll let you know that. We have a question from Ray. So can your guest please give can your guest please give image AI sites he mentioned last week? Can he help with the spelling, please? Okay. Okay. So can we talk about so we, we the images? We spoke of Mid Journey. Yes. Mid Journey. M I D J O U R N E Y. Mid Journey is paid. So if you want something free, you can do it. D E D A L L E. And then we can also talk about free pick. F R E E P I K. So some of these platforms are already existing platforms for particular uh, tools or work. So when you open the platform, you have to 
look on the tax bar or the menus they have at the top to be able to access the AI part of the website. Yeah. So for instance, you open free pick. Free pick is for um, graphic design and other stuff like that. But at the top, you can see the AI option. When you select it, then you can be able to access the AI. So when you open it fresh, you might be surprised at what you are seeing, but you're not lost. It's F R E E P I K dot C O M. And then we have um, Canva. Canva is very common now. Canva, Canva also does image generation. And I, I spoke about Copilot. So yes, you mentioned Copilot. Yeah, Copilot also. You can add that to it. Copilot also help with the image generation as well. Okay. So we have that for the image generation tools. Now we can look at the prompts. We can look at the prompts. We can start a conversation on the prompts and how people can use that to at least put in their questions and then the results that they will get back on it. Okay, we can talk about that then. Afterwards, we can open the phone lines and have people call in and ask their questions. So you can reach us on the number 0302 You can call us and ask your question about AI tools that you would like you are using or you have any question about it. You can just call us and let us hear from you on that. So can we now talk sure. about the prompt? So let's yeah. ask ourselves what is a prompt first. Yeah. Before we get anyone confused. P O P R O M P T. What is a prompt? Uh, all these AI tools have um, see, I call it a language, a way they speak to be able to communicate with humans and then the programming that they, are, they, they were made up of. So you have to understand how to speak to them to be able to get out the very best out of them. So for instance, I can, as I said, you can go on, uh, last week I said, you can go on ChatGPT and write, um, I need captions for my company. It will create some captions for you. But for instance, it might just create captions for a sports company. Meanwhile, you are selling ice cream, which is very opposite what you're mm. doing. Yeah. So if you want to really, really, really get the right info from the AI, you have to learn how to con communicate with it. Yeah. Especially for um, the very advanced ones, they are so the knowledge they have is so huge that if you ask them something, they can give you like unlimited answers. So you have to let the AI understand the particular area you want to capture before you. you okay, that. we have a caller on the line. Hello, good evening. This is Adobia. Hello, madam. How are you? I'm good. Oh, yeah. Your uh, name well, and where well, you're calling from, please. And my name is Kwame. I'm calling from Accra. Okay, Kwame. Uh, please, uh, your guest mentioned that uh, if you want to do something, you can use the AI uh, to to check, uh, what do you call it? Uh, if, let's say, somebody is checking for, for plagiarism, you can uh, you you can escape that. So in a bit to escape, you can use the the GBT charts. Then when you are done, you can lift it and put it in 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 a QI is it QI box or something. That's the first question. And then the second question is that he mentioned that um, let's say if you're a student and you want a, a topic on let's say quality management, total quality management, there's a there's a place that you can go. That immediately you type, you can get everything you need about that subject. So I want him to dilate on that matter for me. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Kwame. The word is chat GPT, chat GPT, C H A T, then G P T, P for pan. All right. So, okay. Some more, yes. So let's look at it again. I want uh, information from chat GPT. I do not want my lecture to know that I took it from ChatGPT because now they have to. They don't want to just the lecture. The reason why they are doing this is because they did, they just don't want you to just carry, drop. They just wasted their time in the lecture room if they did that. Yeah. So they want you to put an effort into it. So what they do is that they scan the information that you give them. In order for you to escape from that, you would have to also put in another effort. That is to when you copy the information, put it in another platform to restructure it. The platform is known as Quellbot. Yes, spell that, yeah. U I L L B O T. It's double L, right? Yes. yes. Q U I L L B O T. Quillbot. And you can also use Grammarly. Grammar, G R A M M E R L Y. You can install it and just use it to change some aspect of it. If you have the time, you can also take a time yourself 
take some portions of the information that you've gotten and restructure them yourself. Because if it's in human language, it now becomes less of an AI, so that they can they cannot track it. For instance, instead of you going online to now research on the whole topic on mitochondrion or photosynthesis or whatever topic you want to search on, you can just get information, sit down, okay, this is what they, they are trying to say on this particular sentence. You take it yourself, restructure it, and just give it your lecture. Yeah. So that way you will be able to escape from the plagiarism stuff. Yes. So the second question was about the ag browser. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm doing research. Um, as I said, I was researching on which of the phones to get. I wanted to uh, get between the Pixel phone and then the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Um, going online, I have to now open from one website to another website to another website, which is going to take the whole time or my whole day. Meanwhile, so maybe I'm standing in the shop. And someone just said, okay, um, which one do you want? The, uh, the Pixel 8 or the... Yeah, I quickly go on Arc Browser, A-R-C, B-R-O-W-S-E-R, or Arc Search, A-R-C, S-E-A-R-C-H, A-R-C, Arc. And then I quickly search, um, I can go to Browse for Me and write iPhone 13 versus Pixel 8. Press Browse, browse for Me and you go through the internet multiple websites so you can go to gsm arena you can go to this website that website put them all together in a customized website for me so that website that i will see in the end does not exist it's the AI that puts it together so all the most important information are now listed in that format for me to look at or if i want to i can open a particular website maybe i'm used to a particular website the information they have i can go to that as i mentioned maybe i'm used to gsm arena i can go to gsm arena open a website and that topic will be there but I will now have to go through ads and a whole lot of information to be able to get info- what I really, really want from the website. All I have to do now is to tap the bottom button and select Summarize. It will go through the website, take out the relevant information without the adverts, whatever information that is there that is not necessary, and give me a bullet point of whatever I need from that website. All right. Thank you so much. We have another message. Say, hi, guys. I, jo- I think I joined late, but can you help with the email writing AI? Thanks. Okay. So the email writing AI, we have multiple of them. We have chat, Sonic. We have write AI. We have um, chat GPT itself. We can even use uh, Jasper. I think, uh, did I mention that last week? Yes, we, we talked Jasper. about it. You can also use the co-pilot. <laughs> I mean, all the AIs, most of the AIs can now do that. All you have to do is to make the right prompts as we come to talk about. Yeah. And then it will generate it for you. Definitely. I think one of the examples we gave last week was depending on what you want to even write about, chat GPT being the example, you can indicate it there. The example you gave was when you were trying to even apply for a job and then mm-hmm. you put the details in there. So we'll talk about the prompt as you have mentioned. Mm-hmm. We also have another message from Ella Islego and says, Hi Adobia, your session last week was very useful. I like to consider myself as a conservative when it comes to tech by hearing your explanations about how to use AI to optimize my work at the office was so useful you won't believe that after that session i was so determined to use ai moving forward and i have even signed up for an online course to improve my knowledge thanks so much this is so good to hear ella she's asking a question does one need to be worried about the ai gathering so much information about you do we need to be worried about that? I think you should first be worried about Google. <laughs> 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 no, <Not> yeah. <laughs> Immediately, one thing that I I, I got I got really sad at a point when I started having this fear. I thought I could hide myself from the internet. So I was like, oh, I won't put this here, I won't put this there. Not knowing that my sister was uploading my images somewhere else. <laughs> so there's this image generation platform that came. I think there was a news on that. Um, some platforms are very risky. So you have to take your time. You have to research on them before you try them out. So the platform was for Chinese faces to look like Chinese and stuff like that. And I, I knew that that place was risky, so I didn't want you to jump on it. it. No, no, you know, my sister, your sister was trying to see multiple of my images on that particular platform. How you look without for my the consent. different races. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, your, your picture leaves your phone and goes out through WhatsApp. Or you're already endangered. You're, like, you're out of it. Yeah. So don't be worried so much about it. Just don't put sensitive information out there. 
don't put sensitive information. And I think for some of these applications to their privacy settings that you can also yes. check. So based on that, you will not be easily seen when someone mm -hmm. just goes into Google and search. But you have to check your privacy settings. Yeah. It's very important. We are having a conversation on how you can use AI tools to enhance your office work. This is Geek Squad with your girl, Adobe Abitim. And I have had with me in the studio, Samuel Boatin. We want to talk about the prompts, but before we do that, did you know that MTN Momo now has an app? Yes, MTN Momo has a brand new app specially designed to make your Momo experience easier, convenient, and faster. Just download the Momo app on Play Store or App Store on your smartphone and look out for the blue and yellow icon. It's that simple. Momo app allows you to view statements, pay bills, and so much more. Use the app for your Momo transactions and enjoy a 100% bonus when you recharge using the Momo app. So go on, download the Momo app now and start transacting with a flex at no data cost. Just Momo it everywhere you go. This card is brought to you by MTN. MTN everywhere you go. And I've had with me in the studio Samuel Boatin, the content creator for interesting digital trends. And so far we have been discussing the various tools that can be used. We want to talk about the prompts. Can we just touch on that before we wrap up on the other okay. AI tools? So this is where all the trick is, especially for the students who want to write their thesis. <laughs> <laughs> um, for you to be able to utilize the power of the, so, uh, the AIs, you have to learn how to communicate with it. For instance, at first when it came out, that's why I call it chat GPT. You have to have a conversation with it. When it came out, we were just having simple conversation. Hello, chat GPT, blah, blah, blah. Then it talks back to you. Then the information that you are entering, you realize that it doesn't create a new what, uh, chat every time. It just continues. So that means that you can have a whole... Um, build up of information to the extent that by the time you get to the fourth um, message that you sent to it, it can take from the first information that you mm -hmm. shared. So that's what I do. I'm looking for a job. Okay, I've had um, multiple companies downloaded their images, their emails, and all that. I'm using practical. Then we we'll go to the theoretical aspect. So I have all these flyers now that are requesting for um, your CV. So I go through all of them and then upload my CV on ChatGPT. I just copy my CV itself, not the document. I can, you can take a picture of it if you want to. Now it has an image processing ability. You just copy the text, paste it, press enter, and then it will acknowledge that it has received your CV, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. If you want improvement, blah, blah, blah. You can also uh, do it in a way that when you up, uh, input it, you press shift, enter, especially when you're using a keyboard, to push down further, to able to write the information you need under. So after you write that this is your CV, Imagine you're talking to the what? Can we just touch on why we are using the shift enter? Yes, because if you don't, it will just send, send whatever you TV. have done, and yes. you you're not ready to send it yet. Yes. So you just use this to just yes. go down like a line. Good. Down. So I can give it space, because some people think that your prompt must be one line or two. No, a prompt can be a whole book. You can write a long prompt so that the AI can understand really, really, really what you need mm. and be able to tackle it specifically so that the, the generations you get up are now very, very accurate. Because if you don't think it, you get generations that are not, responses that are not that accurate. And you might think that the AI are not smart. They are very smart. But, but they are very smart. Yes, yeah. you have to be able to narrow down information. So I put my CV there. I'm, I'm giving two practicals, then we go to the theory. The first one, I'll put my CV, push down further, write that imagine you are applying for a job for this role and that role and this is what the company requ requires then i'll copy the image information from the company flyer paste that one to in addition and then state that write an email with this particular information stated above that you want to apply for this blah 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 when i'm done i press enter it will read through all the information i've sent it both my cv and the information needed from by the flyer and then generate the right email that needs to be sent to them. So instead of me trying to boggle my mind and skipping things around that particular email, the, because of how I wrote the, uh, the prompt, yes. that is how I, the prompt is just how you communicate with the AI. Yeah. How I wrote it is now able to understand that, okay, this is what he wants from me. 
I want it in a friendly tone. So now it brings a friendly tone. Yeah. Then I can copy it and paste it. Yeah. So with that too, uh, remember last week someone spoke about copying and pasting in Notepad. Yes, yes, yes. Whenever we, whenever, whenever we copy any text from online, whether it's from a website, sometimes there's URLs and other information that are attached to the text. You might not see it. It may look like ordinary text, but sometimes the format and a whole lot of things are attached to it. So for you to get rid of these information that are attached to the text, you take it to a platform that doesn't use these permissions. That's, for example, Notepad mm -hmm. or your sticky notes on your PC, which is already installed on your machine. Search for sticky notes. Stick, S-T-I-C-K-Y notes n o t sticky notes and then you can use it n o t e sorry yeah you can use it to uh, restructure the text so that the the format and whatever is attached to the text can be cleaned that's one of the ways that you're able to track your your information that is from an ai you paste it there then you copy it from there then you can use wherever you are sending it to so for the same thing you can do you copy it to the notepad then you copy the email from the notepad down into your email your gmail whatever you have opened then you rearrange it and you send notes one more thing yeah and these AI sometimes <laughs> also they leave gaps so that you can fit especially, especially when information you give them is not enough yeah so you didn't tell them how many years you worked mm. in your previous company so it will give you everything but it will say that okay i have this number of years of experience blah 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 and then to put a hard bracket there you would have to go through and find those spots and fill it in by yourself yes but if you're able to prompt well enough everything will be filled in okay so this is on the prompt depends on what you are putting in like we would say garbage in garbage, garbage out. out if you don't put in the right request then you're not going to get the right responses okay example number two yes so example some, number two is let me go to the marketing department so i was working with a team this is a practical something i actually did and we needed to create content on um social media whether from twitter to facebook to um, instagram we needed to come up with ideas and we're struggling because it's something fresh, something that does not exist. So all we had to do was to now sit down and we had a meeting out of five people. Or, so we were just taking in. The ideas coming were just small and it was taking time. So we just went to one of these platforms, the AI platforms, and then stated that stated that um, we need to... So let me just say it as I wrote it. Uh, imagine you're a marketing lead mm. for a new startup, see, I'm, I'm mentioning it, that needs to run content on social media for the next six months after lunch. What are the key informations that you would want to highlight during this particular campaign? Enter. It will give you all the key highlights. And therefore, you can also go back again. From these key highlights, yeah. how, generate a content calendar as a uh, social media manager for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Enter. Then you do, you be magic. It's just come pop, 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 like that. Plenty. Then from there, you can take it as a team and then use utilize it and add content to it and then you post. So this is how easy we can just... Very easy. But I can't go in and just write, hello, I need... Uh, content for <laughs> this thing, six months, boom, <laughs> nothing. You will not get anything. Be specific yes, we tried that at first and we failed. <laughs> we didn't. Then I, I, I remember. Oh, okay, we are making a mistake. We should go deeper because yeah. the first time we wrote it, the answers that were coming out were all just vague and generic. Mm. Yeah, so mm. prompting is very, very important. Once you are using any AI tool and you want to maximize its benefits, then you have to check the kind of prompt that you give it. This is Geek Squad with Adobe Breachum, and we've been having a conversation on how you can enhance your office work. If you're a student, also how you can even enhance the work that you do using AI tools. Using AI tools. Yes. I think we just want to touch a bit on. Okay, so there is this platform known as Text Cortex. T E X T C O R T E X. It's also like another virtual assistant, more like ChatGPT and all that. When you want to rewrite, for example, you write a caption, you have stolen a caption from, let's say, you know Bank of Ghana is very good with their caption. You go to the platform as a social media manager, you see how they wrote their news article concerning a particular program, you're also involved. You want to rewrite the particular caption that they used. You can copy it and paste it in this text cortex and ask it to rewrite. Immediately you write rewrite, 
it now restructures the same information given it in that same lens in another format so that I can easily utilize it. But immediately use the word improve. It writes a whole page, like it's writing a whole new blog for mm. that particular topic. So the very languages that you're using, the rewrite or the word that you use has a particular way it affects the AI and the way it responds. That is the prompting. So the word rewrite will restructure whatever you've given in a short, if it's a sentence, it will give you a sentence back. But if you write improve before the same information, you get a whole long list. So you have to be careful and be able to, I was coming to say this, but let me just ju- say it now. You have to be able to have, a, how do you call it, a prompt library, a place that you, you save all the prompt that you think are working for you. So for now, from the, uh, the generation that we did, I've been able to keep it in my mind and I've written it down somewhere. Whenever we need to create any content for any social media platform, I know how to go about it because of the experience I've had. So now I have a library down. Wherever I need anything, I just go there, borrow it. And people are selling their libraries. I don't know if you've seen it. If you go on, like, and Google, selling, yeah, people are selling their yeah. libraries. People are creating amazing things with these AIs that you've not thought of. So you go online, you check some of these libraries out, you copy them and use them. You can use yeah. them. This is Geese Carry, your girl at the BR Breaching. We've been having a conversation on how you can enhance your office work using AI tools. We have a message. Please, when you send your message to our WhatsApp number, kindly add your name so that we can just see it. So this person is saying that, okay, they were able to copy some information from ChatGPT. However, when they posted it on Word, they are having, I think it's about the formatting, so we can just yes. touch quickly so on the formatting. You can easily... Uh, fix that by when you paste you see when you paste in word there's an option paste and then paste with format paste with just the text and blah 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 it appears immediately after you're done posting sorry pasting so you will see the options there you can clean it by selecting the last one or if you want to go the long way as you said go to notepad instead of microsoft word straight paste the notepad then move to microsoft word so okay. paste the notepad copy all right so you can just use notepad and then remove all the things from there thank you so much for making time with us this evening and thank you so much samuel button i mean our time is already up we can't really do final words but just in case you missed out on this you can just check it out on our youtube and facebook channel at joy 99.7 fm you can just send through your questions on the whatsapp number 055 1111997 we will do our best to respond to them thank you for making time with us if you want more information yes you can follow our page and we'll give you more details interesting digital, digital trends. trends up next is champions league stay tuned <laughs>